Well, the FOMC minutes are out today from the Fed meeting of January 27th and 28th. As usual, they're pretty boring, but there were actually a few interesting nuggets in there. I'm joined by my colleague, Matt Klein. Matt, thanks for being here. Uh, let's get right into it. So I said there were a couple of interesting things in there, but I think what was most interesting was something found at the beginning of the minutes, uh, which had to do with an abstention from the Fed's statement of long-term monetary policy goals. What was that about? Right. So every year, the, the first meeting of the year, the Fed reaffirms its goals. It's part of the rules for the Humphrey Hawkins Act. Uh, used to be they had money supply targets. They eventually phased those out. Uh, starting back in 2012, they introduced the 2% inflation target. This is not particularly controversial stuff. It generally yeah, says... Yeah, usually it's not. Right. It shouldn't be controversial. It basically just says we support the law, which says that they need maximum... They support maximum employment, price stability, moderate long-term interest right. rates. Uh, there was an abstention, however, from Governor Tarullo, which is interesting in itself because normally the governors, or at least it hasn't been the case for a while, that Fed governors disagree. They just pass it right. They just vote for everything. Yeah. Usually the stuff is discussed at, uh, at the board meetings before the FOMC, so right. it's unusual. Uh, the rationale that he provided in the minutes was that he felt that there was an artificial sense of consensus uh, relative to the actual disagreements about the principles uh, for the monetary policy strategy. So it's hard to know exactly what that means. There's certainly a lot of yeah, disagreements I didn't follow any of that really. on the committee. <laughs> You're right. I mean, uh, it's not like you can get any of them on record to say they don't support price stability, they don't support right. uh, full employment, whatever full employment means. Um, right. So it's unclear what that Artificial means. Artificial sense of consensus. Okay. So um, right. there was more disagreement over the principles than was let on in the document. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Second point, in the staff's review of financial stability, right, um, they, f they added something that was new as well. What was that? That's right. So the, in part of their staff presentation, they have an overview now of risks to financial stability, and that includes things that we know had been risks in the past, such as bank leverage, maturity transformation, borrowing by the non-financial sector. Those things are all supposedly okay. Uh, they noted a few areas of concern. One is uh, the level of the corp what's going on in the corporate bond market, which is something that people have been remarking a long time. Sure. Arguably, partly a consequence and even a goal of Fed's monetary stimulus to make it easy for companies to borrow and invest. Uh, they noted a couple other interesting things, though, that are new. One is uh, commercial real estate lending conditions they thought might be starting to get a little... Bad uh, underwriting. Starting to Maybe. I mean, they weren't specific. Exact Basically, that was an area for concern. Uh, and then the other thing, which it, uh, harkens back to research that really started coming out maybe about a year or so ago and is picking up steam elsewhere, is the role of asset managers and bond funds in potentially affecting financial stability in terms of liquidity, where you have a lot of investors putting money into index funds, or, or not necessarily, indi but, but you know, they buy shares, there's no, there's no uh, leverage issue, there's no, it's not like a money market fund where you suddenly break the buck, but uh, you're used to your returns being positive. Uh, borrowers will issue, will roll over their debts into these funds. There's a there's an easy liquidity. If something happens and people start pulling their money out, it might be very hard. Uh, there might be a sudden stop for a lot of borrowers. This is an issue that uh, Hyun Song Shin raised in a paper uh, about a year ago. Since then, a lot of uh, researchers and other central banks have been talking about this. So it's interesting the Fed is also uh, now looking into it. I mean, yeah, the extent to which is hard to say. Sure but there's also the idea that dealers have been scaling back their inventory of corporate bonds and right. that if there's a sell-off, the problem is that as they had in the past where they'd step in and absorb some of the pressure, now they won't be there, at least not to the extent that they used to be. Right. Um, okay, we actually do have to talk about monetary policy in this case. There was one line in there that said many participants anticipated that they might want to keep interest rates at the lower bound uh, for a longer period of time than was previously thought. We don't know what many means, right? But this is, this is I think, what a lot of people are attributing the market reaction right after the minutes too. What do you think about that? Right. I mean, the question, you know, these numbers are vague. I mean, we, the question, I guess, is what did they think before? How big has that changed? Also, I mean, we, we know what the dots were saying. In general, there seems to be two camps, roughly, of people who want to start tightening more aggressively earlier on and then finish the tightening process earlier as well. People who want to start later and then they basically end up at the same spot. So when you're, by the time you're in, say, 2017, it doesn't really look right. that different. You know, how much that matters is an interesting question. Uh, you know, what factors are they looking at? I mean, is it a question of the dollar? We have global demand. I mean, who knows? Um, There's I mean, also the issue, by the way, that the Fed's anticipated path and its forecasts for interest rates looks a lot higher than the path that the market has been anticipating right now. And there's the worry that the market's not going to be ready for it if, in fact, 
the path of rate, right, rate hikes looks like what the Fed has said it will be. Um, who knows? Um, another point on uh, inflation. This is really tricky, right? The Fed has a situation where inflation is way below target. It has been way below target for almost three years now. Some of that, maybe the bulk of it now, uh, is attributable to what's happened with oil in the last year or so. But that's actually unclear. We don't actually know. The Fed is trying to take comfort in the fact uh, that we've had these very good labor market reports, that maybe the underlying pressures for growth are going to drive inflation back up towards 2%. They've been wrong about that in the recent past, and they're hoping they're going to be right about it this time. But this is tricky, and it seemed like in the minutes, you couldn't really tell what the Fed was thinking here. I mean, they've seemed dead set on having a mid-2015 first rate hike. But in terms of following the language on inflation, I couldn't really figure out where they were going with that. Yeah, I think part of the issue is we say, like, they, and I don't think there really is a unified they. Uh, I mean, yeah, these no are all right. I mean, yeah. there's like a ton of. I mean, the one probably it was Coach Lakota, although who knows? But there was it, there was a line about how one person said that he actually should be trying to increase monetary accommodation because sure. of the decline in inflation. Uh, so I mean, there's there's a huge range of views here, and how you know the the product that we see is just the aggregation of it. The June 2015 consensus that everyone thinks is going to happen. That's right. probably a compromise that was hashed out. Where you know be, it would be interesting if anyone individual person thought that was necessarily the optimal time to start the normalization process. Uh, we don't know, but I mean, I guess you know, six years or so from now, uh, we'll be getting the transcripts of this meeting, and, and then we can get a sense of really how that conversation <laughs> was going. But I mean, there's all these different, th I mean, there's also a whole discussion there about the relationship between labor markets and wages and inflation, which is sure. something that you and I have both written about, and it's basically nobody really understands it's the connection. It's very, very tenuous. There's, right, there's no, there's no consistent yeah. relationship between any of these things, so it's hard to really make any kind of conclusions. Right. Uh, maybe what we'll end up learning from all this, from this period of time, is that the Phillips curve was a big figment of everybody's imagination. Who knows? Um, anyways, all right. Matt Klein, thanks very much. And uh, go to ftalphaville.ft.com if you want to see more. And uh, we'll see you next time.